Hello, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube live. I am Sarah Simon. I'm coming to you from Appleton, Wisconsin. It's a hot one here today. And I feel like everything on my computer today is really slow. So if my lips aren't sinking or if anything's off, I apologize. I don't know what's going on. Oops, I got to turn my volume down on my iPad so that you don't I don't hear myself as a repeat. But um, on my iPad, it looks okay. It's on my computer, I look kind of jumpy. So I hope everything is okay on your end. Hello, Kelly Perpich and Mary Van Domlin and Michelle and Betty and Linda and Carol. Thank you so much for joining me on this different night. Oh, let me tell you how this week has been. It has been crazy. Hello, Kathy Miller. I signed up to take a class at... Um, Marquette University in downtown Milwaukee, like, I don't know, in April or May, we signed up for it. I think it was probably in April. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Kay. Um, well, we um, we decided, uh, there's another teacher and I that are going, the, my, the person that I work with, and we decided it's her son's birthday today, and we decided we're just going to drive back and forth. There's two of us. It can't take that long. Well, does it, it's not that it takes long. But it's tiring just sitting in a car and driving and doing and then sitting in a class all day and looking at a computer all day. And the class is awesome. So don't get me wrong. I'm really glad we did it. We got to do it for free. And when we were there today, somebody told us that we also make $600. Like Marquette is paying us because we're getting educated to be teaching computer science. And there's such a shortage in computer science that... If we commit to teaching it this year, which we are in our fifth and sixth grade, then we will get $600. And if we go to these classes that they have throughout the year, there's four of them we have to go to, we get another $300 for each one of those or $300 total. I don't remember, but it was news to me and I was excited. Hi, Aunt Mary. Hi, Patty and Barbara and Sandy. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, I'm going to start with some happy mail. Look at this beautiful card that I received in the mail. Um, I even forgot who I got this from. I'm going to open it up. It's so gorgeous. Oh, this is from Mary Linsmeyer. She said she was surprised to see that she got a surprise. She loved the pool party ribbon. And she said that her, her husband had a heart attack. So she's been taking care of him along with her mother-in-law. So Mary, my prayers go out to you as you are having to be the caregiver for so many people. Thank you in your busy schedule for finding time to send a thank you note to me. That is so, so kind of you. Just know, be assured of my prayers for your husband and for your mother-in-law and for you as the caretaker. Now for prizes. Last week, we made this cute um, easy fold with some designer paper that went together really, really fast in a matching envelope. And then we had our creative challenge. So I made this card in the lemon lolly. And I must be in a lemon lolly mood because one of our cards today uses lemon lolly too. So we're going to be using this same color again today, but with a different combination. We're not going to be using the uh, smoky slate with it. And then this was the same layout, but using designer paper instead of using an embossing folder. And so receiving these for placing a comment, no matter where you place a comment. So if you are signed into YouTube and you're able to leave a comment, you can leave a comment there and I look at those. If you're watching this delayed and you leave a comment not in the live comments, but in just the comments, I look there. If you can't figure out this whole YouTube thing and you, oh, I think I got disconnected. I think I'm, uh, I'm going to close out. Let me close out this. Maybe I just have too many things running. Um, but I, um, if you make a comment on Facebook, because that's where you originally found me. So wherever I posted this tonight about Facebook, if you leave a comment there, I put all of those names into a drawing. Actually, I write them down and I assign you all a number. And I have the computer randomly pick a number and whatever number it lands on, that person wins the prize. So if you commented last time in any of those places, you got put into a drawing to receive these. And receiving these tonight is Patty Skiba. And Patty, I do have your address. 
And so I will get these in the mail to you. Or maybe I'll just drop them off at your house. You live close enough. And then for sharing. So if you share on your Facebook page or if you share in an email or if you share um, in a private message to someone, make sure somewhere you indicate that you shared. So in one of the comments, just put that you shared. Hello, Kay and Sandy. Thanks so much um, for joining me. Um, so receiving these for sharing last week, again, I put all those names in a drawing. These are adhesive back snowflake assortment. So there are some copper and some gold and some white snowflakes getting ready. Yesterday was Christmas in July, right? July 25th. And so um, receiving these um, is Heather Kohler. So Heather, I do need your address. So send me a private message um, either on um, Facebook Messenger or you can email me at createwithsarahllc at gmail. And I will send me your address and I will get these in the mail to you. I see Jeanne on here. Jeanne, you won last week and I need your address. I wasn't able to send them out to you. So if you could do the same thing and you could send me a um, message, either private message in Facebook or an email, then I will get those out to you. It was a spool of ribbon. It was a Christmas ribbon too, or you didn't have to use it. It was red and gold. Okay, I'm going to put those away. Oh, and then for placing an order. Now, I know this person run last week, but she's the only person who placed an order from me this week. So winning this stamp set that's called Hope You Know that has, and if you have this already, Michelle, let me know. It's I have a bunch of stamp sets that I ordered with the sale, and this is the one that I grabbed today. It has a wishing you comfort. May you find peace in the days to come and in the loving thoughts that surround you now so receiving this is michelle jones and so i will get this in the mail to you um hello diane thank you for sharing all right those are our prizes and now we have a special drawing that we have to do so many of you participated in my creative challenge last week thank you if you would go back to my facebook page and look at some of the cards that are in those comments. Beautiful cards, lady. Absolutely beautiful. So receiving or getting their name in the drawing to receive the bundle of their choice um, are, and if I missed you, make sure you send a comment right away. I have Cheryl McClure, Tammy Litsky, Michelle Jones, Sandy Calloway, Aileen, Aileen Humphrey, Diane Van Grohl, Melanie Foy, Mary Van Domlin, Karen Roofing, Karen Karst, Linda Kester, Sarah Markwart, Mary Linsmeyer, put two cards in. Thanks for sharing, uh, Kay and Mary. Oh, good, Michelle, you don't have that one. Awesome. Kelly Wildenberg and Diane Hermson. So I'm gonna mix all of these up pretty good. And if I missed your name and you put something in, please send me a message right now if you can, if you're on hopefully, so that you can, so I can make sure that I get you added before I do the drawing. I don't want anyone to be missed, but I did just look at it. I walked in the house, I kid you not, traffic was horrible today driving home. We got out of there first of all a little bit late, our class ran later because they wanted us to get out early on Friday. Well, I don't think we're gonna go on Friday because now class is only gonna be two hours long. I'm not gonna drive three and a half hours for two hours. So um, we're gonna do some stuff, I think, virtually. But anyway, um, we had, traffic was horrible, so I got home late and I'm like, oh no, I gotta write everybody's name down. So I did look at them just tonight because I didn't do it last night because I wanted to get to bed. Uh, how did we, ice cream making with the kiddos go? Let me tell you, it was awesome. They had a blast. But did I smell like a soft serve machine when I was done? I, like every kid came to me with their bag and I had to scoop the ice cream out of their bag into the cup so that they could put their toppings on it and stuff. But they had so much fun. I had so much fun. Um, I felt a little like, oh, at the end of it. But it was like a good kind of a, oh, at the end. And so... Um, anyway, it was a blast. 
All right, I don't see anybody else telling me to add them. So I'm gonna just, I mixed these all up really good and I'm gonna pick one. And our lucky winner is, what does it say? Sandy Calloway, Sandy Calloway, congratulations. I will be reaching out to you to see what bundle you would like. And if you would like to wait for a month until the holiday catalog comes out and see if there's something in there that you wanted, um, you can definitely do that. You can just let me know that as well. So I have to admit tonight, I only have two cards and I don't have three cards because I needed sleep because I knew I had to drive there and back today and I didn't want to be falling asleep and there was supposed to be rain coming in. We drove all the way there. Like we basically got to the outskirts of Milwaukee today. So we were into the ride about, I don't know, an hour and 10 minutes and it finally stopped raining and it was pouring and downpouring at some part. So it wasn't a fun ride in this morning. The ride home was a lot of traffic from the Brewer game getting out. And so, yeah, it was just kind of crazy, but um, I only have two cards tonight. One is a fun fold, it's a pocket card. And the other one is just a really simple layout that you can do. So I still wanted to jump on here. Next week, I will have my normal three cards again. Um, but I just wanted to let you know ahead of time that I didn't do it because I really just needed to take care of myself. And I know that I knew that you would understand that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera and I'm going to turn my overhead lights off. I noticed when I was, I didn't jump on here until, oh gosh, I want to say it might've been 10 minutes to seven. <laughs> I was like, I got to get on there. So we are going to be using this stamp set, Circle of Sayings, and I'm going to be combining it with our Gone Fishing. Doesn't look like it would go with the Gone Fishing, but I wanted to show you that that DSP can be used for a lot of different things. My inspiration actually kind of came from myself <laughs> and um, another demonstrator. So I'm going to bring my whole bucket up here. So when I was in a card swap and had to use the, um, what's it called? Gorgeous, magnificently made, whatever that stamp set is, this beautiful paper that has like the torn paper and stuff. This was a card that I made for the swaps. It was a simple layout using some of the designer paper and just cutting it in different sizes and layering it on here. And then I stamped, I don't know if you can see that, there was like a little background stamp that looked like some set type or type set. And I ended up stamping that on the background just to give it a little bit of something else. So I have this card, but then I received this one in a swap from the very talented Sandy Carlson, who had to do use this suite. Whoops, sorry about that. The um, this suite she had to use, and look at that. It's basically the same layout. She used different designer paper instead of a white background. She used the moody mauve, and she didn't put anything on her back layer like I did. But she had a circle, and then had an image. I had a stamped image she cut something out. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this layout and have it look like it's a different type of card. Like first glance at this, you might not say, well, those are the same two cards. Well, they're the same layout, just done two different ways. So we're gonna do that layout today so that you can get all of the dimensions and know how you might be able to do it. I'm gonna move my mouse out of the way here. Okay. Hi, Denise. Thanks for joining us. It doesn't matter if you're a little bit late. And Denise is going to take, okay, let me tell you a funny story. So um, I was shopping for all of the supplies for the ice cream. And in my head, when I was at the store, should have brought the recipe with me, forgot. I'm thinking, oh, I need a cup of, I need a cup of half and half. And I'm like going through and I'm like, okay, a cup. And I'm figuring out how many ounces that is, how many kids I have. You only needed a half a cup. So I have twice as much um, half and half as I needed. I had more vanilla than I needed. I had more kosher salt or ice cream salt than I needed. And so Denise asked me for the recipe because she wants to do it as a STEM activity with her little second graders this year. And I'm like, 
don't go and buy anything. I'll donate <laughs> what I had left. <laughs> so it's I'm happy that somebody else is going to be able to use it. I didn't know what I was going to do with all of it. All right, this is a masculine card using this paper, but not really using the fishing set at all, just using the paper along with a different stamp set. I'm using one stamp from the fishing set, Vaughn Fishing stamp set. So this is eight and a half by five and a half, and I scored it at four and a quarter, and this is Mossy Meadow. And then I never like to emboss the front of my card because I find that it makes the front of it too weak once I emboss it. It kind of breaks down those fibers. So I cut another layer that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I embossed that. And it's just going to lay right over the top of it. Now this is that um, twisted knot, I think is what it's called, um, embossing folder. And then I am using four by five and a quarter for the inside. And Wild Wheat is probably my least favorite color by Stampin' Up, but it looks really great in certain cards if you're using certain designer paper, like this one that has the Wild Wheat in it. Also in this Daisy paper, um, there's also one that has the Moody Mauve and has this Wild Wheat with the Moody Mauve, and it looks wonderful. And so with the right combination of papers, even though you might look at it and say, ugh, I don't like that color of yellow. Um, you can see that it it's a great color of yellow if you put it with the correct papers and combinations. And Stampin' Up does all that for you with their um, with their color patterns. Like all of their designer paper have colors in their families. This is a scrap for stamping, and then the dimensions that you need for the um, designer paper. You're going to have one pattern that's three inches by one and three quarters inches. So this is the three, one and three quarters. You are going to have one pattern. This was one that kind of looked like a little map um, that is one inch by two and three eighths. And then this has those same colors in it. So I decided to do the little hooks here, the little lures, um, one and seven eighths by two and three eighths. I decided I wanted to take this paper and put a little strip on the inside, which is a half an inch by four inches. And then there are six of these circles. Whoops. There's six of these circles in the um, stylish shapes. This is the third from the largest one. And this one is the third from the smallest one. Okay. So I use the third, the ones that are right smack dab in the middle. All right, we do have to do a little bit of stamping and I'm gonna do that first before we put this all together. So I need my two very vanilla pieces and on this scrap that I had, I'm going to take that celebrate, celebrate, celebrate circle and I'm going to um, stamp it. Let me get my stamp pads out here. I haven't even gotten those all out of the box. I just started talking, started showing you the other cards that I made with it. All right, we are going to stamp that in the Wild Wheat ink. Yay, I'm glad that Denise is able to use it. I am happy to share because I said to my mom, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff. And I don't want to have it go to waste. I didn't know if a homeless shelter could use it. Okay, so I'm just stamping this Celebrate. Oops, I also need this one. Forgot about that. I'm gonna stamp on that as well. All right, on this piece right here, this is again going to be my inside. With this Wild Wheat, I'm going to stamp that lure. I'm gonna kind of try to stamp it somewhere near the middle. Okay, off to the left just a little bit. Then I'm gonna close up. No, I'm not. I lied. Um, I'm gonna take my lure. I need to get a piece of scrap paper. I would have noticed it when I started gluing and realized that I was gluing on my mat. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp this lure I'm going to stamp off once and I'm going to stamp that tone on tone. 
So it's just very, very faint on there, but it just kind of matched a little bit with this paper that had a lure. Okay, then I'm gonna close up my wild wheat. And I'm gonna bring in the mossy meadow. And on this little circle, I'm using the happy birthday that was in the circle saying. So I'm gonna put that happy birthday is gonna be going right inside of here, but this is on white and then this is gonna be on the wild wheat. Stand up so I can get that centered. Okay, so I've got the happy birthday. And then I wanted a little greeting on the inside as well. And I couldn't really find one that I liked until I pulled out my ladybug <laughs> stamp set. And right inside the ladybug, and I thought that the word wish matched kind of that birthday font a little bit with it being... Um, all of this being caps and that being more in italics. These were all in caps and that was in italics. So it says, may your greatest wish come true. And that's a great birthday greeting to give someone. So I thought that worked perfect. All right, I am finished with the ink. So I'm gonna put that away because something will land in it otherwise. I'm going to bring out, now these circle sayings are come in a bundle with our two and three eighths inch um, punch. But this Celebrate is actually a little bit smaller than that. And so you actually can, if you are very, very careful, you can actually cut this out with our two inch punch, which is in one of our online exclusives. I love punches. I love when I don't have to run something through a machine and I can just easily punch it, especially when I'm making a lot of them. <laughs> So I went ahead and punched that out. Um, I'm going to remove all of these, but I'm gonna keep these in here. I do have to type this up yet because like I said, I wanted to go to bed last night. I felt I needed some sleep. And so that did not get done either last night. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this layer and this longer one is going to go down here. I'm going to make sure my lures are going in the correct direction. If there is a correct direction. I don't know if there is a correct direction. I'm just sort of dry fitting this to see where I'm going to need to place it. Okay, and then this is going to go up here. Okay, so that is how our designer paper is going to lay out. Now you could layer it out differently if you wanted to. You could cut different sizes. You could make this one be horizontal and this one be longer and that be long. You can, you can design it however you want. This just happened to be, we both must have seen the same layout somewhere and decided to do that. Yeah, Jan, that wild wheat color is a little bit difficult to get used to. But like I said at the beginning, if you combine it with the right combinations, look at how cute those fish are. So you could do this really with blue paper if you don't like the green, the mossy meadow, and the wild wheat. You could use the blue patterns, and you could use the fish, or you could do the blue and this um, pebble path together. That would look really nice together too. So I'm gonna bring this around. I want to, the easiest way for me to do this, because since I took this off now, is I try to make the three borders all be about an equal distance. So I wanna have that border about the same on those three sides. And I just did move it up a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna do the same thing with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of liquid glue. And again, I'm going to try to make sure that this is going to be this, the right and the left. I'm gonna kind of line it up here and then I want my top border to be about the same as my side border. So there we go. And then the last piece is just going to fit right in here. That's going to go right in there. And just like that, we've got a really neat background that adds a lot of, I mean, it's just, it's not just a single piece of 
designer paper, it's really coordinating the designer papers to go together to add a little bit of extra interest to the front of your card. Okay, this is going to just go right on top of the front. It, I didn't even cut it um, a quarter of an inch smaller. I cut it exactly four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's going to cover the entire front of this card. Make sure my head's not in here because I feel like I'm bringing my head in, but I'm keeping out of the camera pretty well. Okay, so there is our front layer. And then I am going to raise this up on some dimensionals. I'm going to have a little bit of dimensionals. I'm going to have more than one layer of dimensionals. Let's put it that way. I felt like it just needed that. So I'm going to go ahead and layer this up on some dimensionals. And we'll pull these off. Throw them in my little coffee mug that I got on my desk for those. <laughs> and I'm going to stand up on this because I want to make sure I get this straight and centered as best I can. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to tape this along the bottom here just to bring a little bit of that color, the plaid, into the center. And then we will add this to the center of our card. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to layer these. So we said that this was the third from the largest. This was our two inch circle punch. And if you layer that, you can just barely still see the stitching around the outside. So you're basically lining it up to the stitching. And then this will go right inside of the center. And I'm actually going to raise that up on some dimensionals too. We're actually going to have three layers of dimensionals. I just thought of that. <sighs> Not just two, but three. Okay, so I'm lining that up right along the stitch. And then I'm going to go ahead. Whoops. Let me get us connected again. Hang tight. Getting used to this. There we're back. I still don't know why it does that. All right, so I didn't, you really didn't miss anything other than I was putting dimensionals on this little circle. All right, and now I'm going to try to center that around the celebrate. That looks pretty good. And then I decided that, let me just, there we go. Um, I decided that I wanted this to be up on dimensionals too. Actually, you know what? I don't think it has to be on dimensionals. I'm going to leave that down. I changed my mind on that. I'm trying to think if on mine, I should look at my original. I did put it on dimensionals, but let's put it on dimensionals. What the heck? Okay, so what I did when I put it on dimensionals is I put two dimensionals on the edge here, and then I put one dimensional over here on this side. I didn't want to put anything in here because I didn't know how far I had to go over and I only wanted dimensionals on this layer because otherwise I'd have to put two of them on here because I'd have to account for the fact that this is already on a dimensional. So I'm just going to let this hang over the side just a little bit. And there, I wanted to make sure I took the backing off of all of those. There is our card, but it needs just a little bit of something yet. So when I do masculine cards, one of my favorite embellishments are these metallic looking um, 
dots. These are adhesive backs, so they already have the adhesive on them. So I am, they're brushed, I think they're called brush metal maybe. I don't remember. I should look up the names before I do that. I have a lot of demonstrators on here, so someone will tell you their name. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put one of these little tiny ones at the top of where my hook is there. And then I'm going to put a couple of them down along the bottom of that circle just to add a little bit of something else. And then on the inside, may your greatest wish come true. What a great masculine card, right? Now, if somebody isn't really into fishing, it's not, it's not like over the top fishing. I mean, it has the little lure stamped here and in the paper only because those were the only papers that had these colors in and I wanted to get both of the colors in. And so I ended up having to use the lure. Um, but I wanted to show you that if you have somebody that really isn't all that into fishing, but is a masculine, you know, is a male and you want to make something that looks a little bit more masculine, this paper is the perfect paper for that because it does have two sides. One side has a lot of the fishing stuff. And the other side just has some really cool patterned paper. All right, we're going to add a little bit of that paper to our envelope flap. And I don't know where my paper scissors is, so we're just going to use the ribbon one for now, and I'll be sorry next week. No, I'm just kidding. And I just trim around here to add a little something. All right, so there is our envelope and there is our cute card that could go for it could you could give it to a man you could give this to a woman i think i would probably give this one to a man but there we go easy peasy right and it all came from a card that i had made for another swap and a card that i had gotten in a swap that were the exact same but yet different and now we've got three different versions of it. I added a little bit of embossing to the background of mine. And I layered some circles rather than stamping or adding anything like that. So different ways to do the same kind of layout. Kind of like our technique last week with that um, fractured card or the faux shutter card. Um, there's different ways that you could do it. Some of you did it with designer paper. Some of you did embossing. Everybody had their own little take on it. And all of the cards were just absolutely beautiful. So, all right, I'm gonna bring my paper trimmer in. We are going to make a pocket card for our second card. And again, if you're topping on late, I only am going to have two cards tonight um, because I needed to get some sleep last night. <laughs> So we are going to be using this um, daisy. Look at this beautiful, all the different daisies on it. We're going to be combining it. And I know I've used this before. This is the wanted to say. So these have a thin um, wording. So feel better soon. Um, you're too kind. We're going to use the celebrate tonight. And there's a happy birthday. And then there's like a little bow with a present. There's a little stem with a flower. There's some hearts and there's some stars in this set as well. We're going to use the little flower to kind of go along with our little daisies. All right, so this is a pocket card. So I'm going to go ahead and score and cut the designer paper with you. So this card measure or this designer paper measures 12 inches by five and a quarter. So I could get two of these out of um, one sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper. You could not do this with a six by six because it wouldn't work because you need to have 12 inches. I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way you could piece some of it together. We could probably look at that, but I, probably not. It wouldn't, it probably wouldn't look right unless you did it behind something that was in the back, uh, which might make sense once I do this. So you're going to score it at four inches and eight inches. If you don't want to bring your arm out to do the eight inches, you could easily just score it at four inches from both ends. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to score it from four inches. I don't press as hard with my scoring tool when I'm doing designer paper because otherwise I tear it. So I'm just going to go ahead and score that. Now I'm not going to go anywhere with my trimmer. I'm going to bring my score out of the way. What I need to do now, this one is directional. So I need to have it so that it's in the direction that it's supposed to go. So these are the bottoms of the flowers and then the tops. Okay, if I go like this, they're upside down. So this is di dimensional or directional. So I'm going to go from the top of where the score line is to the bottom of the outside edge. So I'm just going to line up where that point is in my track, cutting track. And I'm going to put the other tip in my cutting track. Okay, so I'm going to put those in there and then I'm just going to cut this little triangle off. Now you could use this for another card somewhere if you wanted to, or this side. You could put the two together because we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So right here is my score line. So there's my little tip. So I'm going to go from that tip down to the corner. This tip down to the corner. I'm going to cut that off. Right, that's all that I need this trimmer for so that you could see that. I'm going to go ahead and fold this in and we're going to burnish. It doesn't look like I went, it doesn't look like I went all the way to the tip. So do a better job than I did of going all the way to the tip. I will give whoever wins this card, I will give them the one that I made um, last night because it should go all the way to this tip to the end. And I must have moved it um, so that it wasn't in the tip. Okay, once you have that, that's going to be your pocket. And what you will need to go along with that pocket is you're going to need a card base that measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And again, I'm in a lemon, lemon lolly kind of mood, I guess, because I, I was drawn to lemon lolly. Um, I also have for my, my um, card that I'm going to be pulling out of this little like envelope that we're making here. Um, I have, this is three and a half a pocket. That's what this is. Three and a half by four and three quarters. And I decided to use thick basic white. Um, just because it's a little bit sturdier for any sort of, anytime I have a card base or something that I need to have um, a little bit more, um, a little bit sturdier paper, our basic, our basic white that's not thick is not as thick as our other cardstock. Okay, then what I did was I took a piece that's one and an eighth by four. Now this is my designer paper, and then this is just the other side of it, which is the inside part here. Okay, so I wanted to match that to that. I'm going to make like a little, kind of like a little, not a belly band because I'm not wrapping it all the way around, but just a little band that goes across the center. Right, I have a little piece, three quarters of an inch by three and a half. This is going to just kind of be a little extra accent to the top of my card that I'm going to pull out of that envelope. And then I did with, this color that's in the back, there's a little bit, I think that's copper clay, or it might even be pecan pie. Um, but the real background color in all of this is that pebble path, one of our new in colors. And so I cut out the outline of the celebrate, it might look better like this, in pebble path. And then I used our adhesive sheets and I put some on the back of a lemon lolly, and then I cut this out with lemon lolly along with one of those flowers that was in that die set as well. Okay, so that's all I need. And then I have a piece for my envelope. So this card is actually going to go together pretty fast as well. It looks probably more complicated than the card really is. All right, so. I'm going to, you know what I think I'm going to do? This is at four. I don't know if I cut, I accidentally cut a piece of the paper out, but it's going to drive me crazy, but I will give you mine. I don't know why it's cut like that unless the paper was cut. All right, I'm going to put, and I like to use my tear and tape 
um, right along the bottom and it doesn't have to go all the way out to the edges because you know you got tips out there in some of the edges so I just kind of ran it towards the middle like that and I'm going to fold my left side in onto that and then I'm going to do the same thing on my right hand side okay I just have to make sure that it's taped so that my card when I put it in there that it doesn't that it doesn't fall through <laughs> it has to have something to stop it and so it doesn't have to go all the way across you can if you want um, but I found it was just as easy to do it in the middle like that and then do the same thing make sure you got that lined up and there is our little pocket that we're gonna put our card in Okay, we're going to adhere this pocket. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to add this little strip along here because if I accidentally cut it a little longer than four inches and it was hanging, let's say, off an edge like this, it's easier to trim it here than if I've already adhered it to my card. Just a little tip. Not that I've ever done that and then regretted doing it or anything, but I thought I'd share that one with you so you don't make a similar mistake. All right, so this is just going to go right across the center there. All right, and now I'm going to add some adhesive. And if you wanted to do tear and tape to make it a little bit sturdier, you could. But you know, once our liquid glue, it does give us wiggle room when we're putting it down. But once it's adhered and it has time to dry, it is a very sturdy glue, so I am always happy with my liquid glue. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and center that on my card base. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and finish our pocket, and then we'll make the card that goes on the inside. So I'm going to peel off. So I said I used some of our adhesive sheets and I'm going to peel off, I think I did, there it is, the backing on that. And what's nice about that is now this is all has adhesive on it. I don't have to try to get just a tiny little bit out of my liquid glue. All right, so this is just going to go right on top and I found when I was doing this, now I can't put my head in here, so I'm gonna stand up. I kind of centered the center first, the B and the E, and then kind of worked my way one way to get it centered on there. Because it does, you can kind of stretch it out and make it bigger than it really is. You just want it to kind of lay flat, and then I'm going to remove my finger from the adhesive here and do the same thing there. Doesn't that just make that celebrate pop by putting it on that background like that? I love these guys. Okay, I am going to put that on here. I'm gonna raise it up on some dimensionals and I am gonna go a little bit to the right because I wanna put one of those little flowers that kind of mimics the flowers that are these little flowers that are here that are lemon lolly. I wanted to kind of mimic that a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some, I think I need some mini dimensionals, not the regulars. And I'll throw, look at this, I didn't even, I must have had some, I don't know what that is. I must have had some adhesive sheets sitting somewhere and it's stuck on there. Okay, and then we'll, Put a couple of those on there. And again, I'm going to remove them and to try to keep them so they're not all over my floor because isn't that annoying? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add this a little bit to the right, but centered, centered diagonally. Right, and this I can also put a dimensional on and it's okay that you're going to see the little white from the dimensional through it. Pop that right there. 
because we have these um, adhesive back solid gems. So we've got Lemon Lolly. This is, I think that's supposed to be Boho Blue or it might be um, Balmy Blue. And then this is the Copper Clay, which is kind of the color that's in the center of those. And so I'm going to go ahead and take one of those and put it, and I think I'm going to take the medium sized one. And I'm going to put it right in the center of that because it kind of then looks just like that picture, that um, flower that's there. Right, so my pocket is done. I could add, if I wanted to, I could have added some ribbon or done anything like that. But I'm going to actually add my ribbon to my um, tag or the card that I'm going to pull out of that. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my card. And this is just going to slide right in there. So I'm going to be using some ribbon to be able to pull it so that they can pull it out. And I have this little three quarter inch that I thought would look kind of nice to just add like a little border to it to bring that lemon lolly into the inside a little bit. So I thought that looked kind of cool like that to have the blue and then have a little bit of the lemon lolly on there. So I just decided it needed a little border. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just glue that down. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some stamping. You could, I could have embossed this. Um, I didn't even really need to add this part. It was just something that I thought looked kind of cool. So I decided to add it. Okay, and I do want to make sure this is glued down pretty good so that it doesn't always get caught on the edge here. So I want to make sure that I don't pull that up if it gets caught on the edge of the, of the pocket. All right, then in our little trio punch that we have, this one that is a straight line, what we're going to do is we're going to put our piece in there straight in. We're going to try to center it so that we've got about an even amount of paper on either end. And you just have to kind of eyeball that. And then I'm going to press it down in the center and it makes a little slit like that for me to put my ribbon in. And I'm going to use some of the Pebble Path ribbon to bring that color from down here into my tag as well. And I probably will need to trim that. So I'm not going to go too far with my scissors. Now, you could, if you don't have a punch like this, you could always take your ribbon and put it here. And you could just take a stapler and you could staple it in place. So you don't have to have this punch that makes a slit or anything like that. You could easily just place it there, bring your stapler in, and staple that in place as well. I'm actually going to fold it in half and I'm going to put the folded part through first and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to it's going to have the little loop is going to be in the back and I'm going to take the tails that are in the front and I'm going to stick them right through that loop and then I'm just going to kind of pull on it I don't want to pull too tight because I don't want to break that can you tell I've done that before too? Um, but I'm just going to kind of pull on these a little bit so it gives me a knotted look on the bottom. And now I can trim Okay, I can just trim that ribbon. Now I do want to stamp something on the inside because all I have is celebrate right now. And I thought this would make a really, really nice birthday card. So I don't really want my greeting to be showing up at the top because I already have the greeting of celebrate on my pocket. So I'm going to actually put my greeting down a little bit. And then my thought was I could always write a message on the back if there wasn't enough room to write a message on the front. You could also put glue dots or something on a gift card and you could add a gift card to this as well and put it inside of the pocket. Okay, so wishing you the brightest birthday. Okay, that looks really good. 
And then there's this little trio that we have of the um, flowers from there, the daisies. And so I'm going to go ahead and just stamp a little clump of those down in the corner of the card. I don't know what I got there, but I'm going to take my sand eraser and just kind of, oops, just threw the stamp away. I don't even know what that is. It's not pencil mark. It's not coming off. It's not ink. I'm not quite sure what it is in the paper, and I don't even know if you can see it. All right, if you wanted to, you could come back in and you could color in the circles, but I don't want that to overtake the flowers. I was afraid you wouldn't. You would just see the dots and you wouldn't see the flowers if I went in and colored in the centers. I tried it on a scrap paper and I didn't really like how it looked, so I just left them the yellow that they are. And now you just have to tuck that right inside of your pocket and you have yourself a cute little card that all they have to do is pull this out and get the card right from the little pocket that you made. I love pocket cards. I think that they're so cute and so easy really to make. This one especially is a really easy um, design, but yet it has a nice wow factor to it as well. I am going to decorate up an envelope here with the same daisy paper. I haven't really been watching the comments. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Thanks for sharing, Sandy. Thanks, Linda. Yeah, our colors are very earthy tonight. Um, our new in colors, the wild weed is a new in color. Um, the pebbled path is a new in color. Um, they are very much earth tones um, this year. And I really, I kind of like that because we've had really bright um, colors for a while. And I don't get me wrong, I love bright. Like I love the Azure Afternoon and I love this Lemon Lolly and stuff. Um, but I do really like the earth tones as well, like the Moody Mauve and the um, Boho Blue. Oh, they're just beautiful as well to go along with them. So, so there are our two cards. Again, I'm sorry there's only two. Next week, I will be back to three again. <laughs> um, but this class is kind of kicking my butt this week. I'm not as young as I used to be. And it's hard for me to pull all-nighters, especially when I know I'm going to have to be behind the wheel the next day. And they're saying it's going to rain, and I know I have to drive quite a ways. So we have our pocket card, and we have our fun layout using designer paper. Um, that's real easy. You can design it however you want. And I could probably bring in here are those extra samples that I had. That's not nice. Whoops, I don't know what wasn't nice. That was my phone. <laughs> Um, I have this sample right here and this sample right here that is that exact same layout using two other um, designer series, sets of designer series paper, um, packs of designer series paper, and also a couple of different patterns. So, oh, that's all I have for you today. I hope that it was worth your time tonight. I had fun making them. Let me go ahead and... I'm not going to have any light on me except for a really bright light over here that's on my workspace. But um, thank you for tuning in a day late um, and kind of a card short. <laughs> but um, I really, really appreciate it. I love hearing your seeing your comments and um, I love to seeing all of your cards. Um, so um, thank you so much for sharing that. And know that you can always do that, even if it's not a creative challenge. Let's say you took this design that we did today and you made a card and you want to share it with everyone on my Facebook page. You can go ahead and you can put those pictures on there anytime you want, because I know everyone else who's watching would love to see what you did with the design as well. So I know Tammy did that. I think a while back you did that, Tammy. If, I don't know if you're on here, Tammy Litsky, but um, she said, you know, I was inspired by you and I made this and I'm like, thank you for sharing. It's so nice to see other people's cards. So, all right, that's all I have for you. I will be back again on Tuesday next week. I will have three cards. Um, I have to go over to my mom and dad's and pick up Lila. So Lila had a spa date today. I don't know if I can call it spa because we love spas. 
Um, I don't know if she loves the groomer. I'm not quite sure. But she's with grandma now, so she's getting spoiled because I really um, could not get her get here before she had to be picked up from the groomer. And then my mom said, why don't you just keep her here for your life and then come over? So um, I'm going to go over there. I want to see my dad. He's having a little outpatient surgery tomorrow. Nothing real serious. But, you know, anytime you have to go in for surgery, it can be a little bit scary. So I guess if you have an extra prayer, we would take it as well. Um, and I'm going to go over and see him before he has to go early tomorrow morning for surgery. And um, yeah, I am going to go pick up my baby and get some sleep tonight. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate your business. I love my time with you online. And I will see you again next Tuesday. I hope that I've inspired you to be a little creative in the next week. Thanks and have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.